Okay, like I said, I go for the evidence. And this was um, research experiments I did with Rod Warren years ago, 12 years ago. And this is actually red laser light. This, and it's concussing with all these particles in front of it because every gas has particles in fields. And as it comes through these gases in the air, they have to get out of the way. They get ex excited and glow, and this gets bigger glow. Now, here it's coming through to the Venturi, and it's accelerating. And at the Venturi, it's an explosion where the white, which is half of the light, separates from the black. It's an absolutely enormous explosion. Coming out the other side are these, what they call Higgs fields. And this is light particles. This happens to be the red. Now, we could see these with the green, the same photons, no difference whatsoever, just more energetic. And with the blue, you really can't see them because they're too fast. Comes in through the Venturi, just rocket ship, and starts slowing down. And here you can see there is two particles. So the, the blue, they're all made of the same particles, they're photons. And the photons are made out of two dipoles and those dipoles are right there the black and the white you see it that's the two dipoles back to back which is a stable particle that means it's not just going to fall apart it's going to hit that wall and bounce back at you that's what light is is photons they bounce they're stable once you go from there up no more stability until you hit certain quantities, which I say is about 1839 of these particles. And, and when I say particle, it's a black and a white together. And right down in the center is where the dark matter is. We've never seen it before. They can't find it because it's in the center of everything. You have to get down to this level to actually be able to see the dark matter. And how can I see that dark matter? It doesn't emit, it doesn't absorb, and it doesn't reflect. I agree with that. It obstructs. It gets in the way of light which would come to the sea moss. CERN is starting to use the sea moss. Same as we've been doing for 12 years. All right, I don't see any need to get real deep into this. Enzymes are the things that the bacteria create. Without them, you die it's almost instantly. And it says all living things depend on millions of chemical reactions are happening every second. Millions, probably billions. And the chemical reactions that keep you alive happen fast. And I mean fast. These enzymes can do more chemistry in less than one second than would happen. It would happen, but it would only happen after millions of years because enzymes just do things instantaneously. Click. Enzymes are important in every living thing. Without them, life as we know it could not and would not exist. Enzymes are the key players in life. Without them, boop, you're done. And it happens just like lightning. It's click. It's a, a magnetic click. Click, done. And, and it does the enzymes don't get used up. They click and blow a bunch of things away and then they go down and click again and doop. it's just like a magnetic click to it. Click, click, click. You know, that's what I see it as, an instantaneous pulse. Call it click, call it whatever you want. But that's, that's what changes the half-lives of all of the particles that they attack. And I mean they attack with thousands and thousands of magnetic dipole moments. And instantaneously it converts them. So that's all I have to say about that. Okay, so why is it so important we even care about these two little particles? They don't even get stable until they get to be a big one like this. And there's 1800 and so, such and such. However, they're not really stable always at that particular point. I'm going to show you what stability means and how life works and why these are so important because these are the basis of enzyme reactions which create nucleophilic substitution and invasion and life. Without enzymes and the ability to move these two little particles around, 
you fall over dead. Enzymes are 100% of the processes in life come from enzymes. All right, this is, no, this is really serious because we need to be able to use those little tiny bits to work with enzymes. Enzymes work extremely fast. Some of the fastest enzymes, like carbonic anhydrase, catalyzing reactions up to a million times a second for digestive enzymes. That's to digest your food. Oops, for, for digestive enzymes to begin working almost immediately upon encountering the food source. The food hits them, they break them, I mean, just instantaneous. Some noticeable effects happening within minutes overall process taking several hours to digest your food and that's all because of enzymes and enzymes are from bacteria so if you don't have good healthy bacteria in your gut you're not going to have the enzymes you're not going to break down your food you're going to have digestive issues you're not going to be healthy all right this is my area i understand this better than anybody breathing oxygen just a fact All right, don't freak out. This is extremely simple. Iron is not just iron, and it's always one ball exactly the same. No. Iron can be that much iron. It can be the same molecule, but only this much, which is an isotope. Isotopes are distinct nuclear, means the nucleus, species of the same chemical element. All they do is they don't have quite enough to be stable, which is in a stable range. They're too small or too big. And how many is there? Well, they've defined 28 different states of iron. All of these. Look at this. All of those are different irons. And all they are is one or two of these particles missing, or five or 10 or 20, or too many. Is having too many or not enough. And what happens with enzymes in your body is they come in with an enzyme and they break these little things into little tiny bits and pieces and they throw off a half a dozen of these and add an extra 12 of those and six, and they, they make your they turn all the things in your body into different stuff that your body can use to create life that's what an enzyme does and i don't think they understand this all right, this goes back a very long time for me. Nucleosynthesis. They're talking about meteorites because they, they think they got changed because of being coming through the atmosphere, and they will. You could, you could change stuff, yes. Okay, they're talking about most of the work on iron was looking at meteorites, how they think they changed coming through and changing their states. But it recently, mass spectrometry have allowed the detection and quantification of minute naturally occurring variations, stable isotopes of iron. Much of this was driven by Earth and planetary science communities, those applications to biological, this is where I'm going, and industrial systems are beginning to emerge. I'm looking for the biological. These, these are the different states of iron that are changed by enzymes in the body of a creature to create food, immunities, all of that stuff. Now, these are isotopes. So I'm going to show you something else about isotopes. Hold on. Now, this is, they're talking about, the, there are 35 metals that are our concern to us because of residential occupational exposure. Well, they're saying 23 are heavy metals. I'm going to tell you something right now. Virtually all these transition metals, as far as I can determine, are in blood. They did a survey somewhere, I can't remember where it was now, but they took, I think, 100 and something very healthy people, and they, did, they tested for 26 different metals and metalloids that were in their blood. Now, what do those things do? Why are they in, their, in, their, in your blood? Are they bad for you? Are they good for you? I can tell you what they do. They do transitions. They're transition metals. They change things. They move molecules around in your body. 
And they do it by using enzymes and isotopes to do a million years worth of chemistry in less than one second. And it, the only thing that stops them from doing their job is if they can't get to the substrate. They will do it instantly when they hit the substrate. It's called click chemistry. Go, Bleep. It's just like lightning hitting you. It's done instantly. All right, this is click chemistry. And it's a method for creating complex molecules through simple, fast, reliable reactions, have high yields and few byproducts. That's catalyzed. You see this? Example is a copper catalyzed, copper catalyzed reaction between this azide and an alkyne to form a triazole ring. It's an enzyme that creates these very, very high yields and very few byproducts, but they're, they're basically natural products created by the body to break things down. Now, they're going to be using it for drug development, material sciences, chemical biology, and uh, I think I got the Nobel Prize for it in 2022 uh, about click chemistry. Now, I've been looking at this. I, I always call it click chemistry myself be, because it is. As soon as it hits, it click. It's done. And um, it talks about connects molecular building blocks like building with Legos. And I'm going to show you. Let me just show you.